In this movie, we're going to create a small building. The building is about 100 square feet, 10 square meters, and it's what's known as a non-consent building because where I live, you don't need a building consent to place one of these buildings on your property. But it is limited to 10 square meters or 100 square feet, and it's also limited to a building height of about 3 meters, 10 feet. So let's get started with drawing. I've got the architect workspace going. So if I go to tools on the menu bar and I look at workspaces, you can see I've got the architect workspace selected. Now I need either the architect designer or landmark workspace. You can't do this with fundamentals. The reason for that is we're going to draw walls to start with. We can use our building shell, our wall tool, and just up here we're going to use the left control line mode, the wall mode there, and the rectangular mode there click to start and we can draw a rectangular building. The building's about four meters long, so we can go four meters, and it's about two and a half meters down. Enter once, enter again, and it's created a building. Now you'll probably find that the building is already created with height. You can see here that my walls have already got height. I'm just using a standard brand new file. If I go here and I choose right isometric, there's my building. You can see there's the height and it's rendered. And my rendering is set by this button here so I can go to OpenGL rendering. If I want to change views, I can either use this pull down menu to change views or I can use my numeric keypad. For example, top plan is key zero on my numeric keypad. Key three is my right isometric. I'm going to start by putting on a roof. AEC on the menu bar and create roof. Now just before I select create roof, just notice that my walls are still selected here. They have this orange color to them. So I can use those to create my roof. My roof is going to be a vertical edge. It's 150 millimeters thick, about six inches. The bearing inset, that's number four here. That's 150 millimeters. My roof pitch is going to be quite shallow. It's eight degrees. And my bearing height is going to be 8 feet, 2.4 meters. I'm going to create an eave overhang. That's this part here overhanging my building of about 600 millimeters. Click OK, and I have my building. I'm going back to my selection tool, this button, this arrow tool here, and I'm going to click on that roof, and I can change that roof edge to a gable. I'm going to click on this one as well. I'm going to change that to a gable. And this one as well, that's also a gable. That might sound funny making them all gable roofs, but if I go to a 3D view, you can see there's my building. And if I hold down the control key and my middle mouse wheel button, I can spin around my building. If I select all my walls, so I've just selected each wall with the shift key held down using my arrow tool or my selection tool. Let's go up to AEC on the menu bar and we're going to go fit walls to objects and we're going to constrain the tops of my selected walls to the objects on design layer one, which is where I currently am. And so now I have my building with a roof on it. If we go back to a top plan view and I select my roof, you can see I have here my indicator here and I've got my eave overhang if I make that just six inches 150 millimeters it pulls the roof in so again 150 millimeters and this one as well the same notice it changes to a hand 150 so now when I look at it in 3d so you can see my building you can see I've still got my roof I've got a very narrow eaves overhangs on most of the sides barge on the side uh, and I have a decent overhang at the front here. I'm going to assign that roof to a lay. I'm going to assign this roof to a class just up here. I want to hide it. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to create a new class. And this is going to be called roof dash main. I need to create a new class so that I can turn the roof off when I don't want to see it. Time to go back to a top plan view. I'd like to create a slab or a floor. So here's my slab tool here. I use this for creating floors. And I can click here to choose the type of floor that I want to make. 
So I'm going to double click on this component here, double click, bring this up so that I can create a floor that's just 20 millimeters thick. Okay, now I can draw around it. So I'm going to use this option here, the polyline mode, and I'm going to draw around my building. There it is there, so I've created a slab. If I right click on my slab, I can go send and send it back, and it'll put it behind my floor. I also want to create some structure to my floor. So I'm going to create some framing members. The framing members here are structural objects. We'll find them under framing member. And I'm going to create a framing member and I need to set my preferences. So here's my framing member preferences. I want the width to be 45 millimeters, about two inches. The height, 140 millimeters, just under six inches. This is a solid beam. Its material is wood. Its structural use is a joist. And the 2D display is a width. And OK. So now when I draw, I can draw my joists. I'll just show what they look like. There's a joist there. So from this corner down to there, and that creates one joist. Now it does create it slightly off-centered, so I just need to move it back. In fact, what I'd really like to have is two of those. So if I drag that with my Option key held down on a Macintosh, or the Control key held down on a Windows machine, I'll get two of those. We should really give these a new class. So let's go here and we'll give it a new class. And here we'll click on the new class button and we'll say that this is structure dash joist. So I now have two joists. I'd like to copy those joists. So they're both selected at the moment. And if I drag those, I'm just going to scroll them with my mouse wheel. I'm just going to make sure I grab those by the corner there, start dragging those down. If I go to the edge of my screen, it'll automatically scroll. Hold down the Option key on a Macintosh or the Control key on a Windows machine. That'll make a copy. And now you see that I've got a couple of copies. I need to have a certain number of copies of these along. So I'm going to make some duplicates. This is my move by points tool. And we don't know how many we need, so we're going to choose about seven. I'm going to choose this mode here, the distribute mode. Click at that corner there. Click at the far corner here. I'm just going to zoom in, show you which corner, this corner just there. Click, and it creates seven copies. Now the last one I don't need. I'll just delete it. So there are my copies of my floor. Because I've given them a class, I've already got a class. So I can choose all of those, that one, that one. In fact, I can use my magic wand tool, this one here. And I want to choose things based on their class and their object type. That'll select all of my framing members together. Right click and send to back. So we have sent those to the back so they're out of the way. Now the only other thing I need to do at the moment is to put in some windows and doors. If I go back to my building shell tool set, we have the ability to create windows and doors. The first thing I'd like to put in is a door. So I'm going to select my door tool and I can look here and see if there's some doors that I might use. There's some barn doors here. We've got hinge doors, louver doors. We might find a door that's suitable like this one here. I can select it. And then I can go to my building, put those doors in. I want them swinging outside. And if we have a look in 3D, there they are. Now you might notice that they're just a little bit too big for my building. I can go to my settings. I can convert these to unstyled. And then I can change the height of that. So we really want that one 2100 high. And there's my doors in place. If we want to put in a window, we can put in a window, we can use a custom window, or we can use a window that's already available, one of these ones. Standard window, standard casement window. Select that and click OK. So I can click on a wall like this, come outside the building, click, and that will place my window for me. 
Let's turn my building around. So I can click on my wall, come outside my building, click once more, and there they are. If I go back to a top plan view, I could even line these windows up if I wanted to. I can just drag the windows along the wall and I can relocate them anytime I want just by dragging along or I can be more accurate if I need to. Let's turn our roof back on and let's have a look at this in 3D. So there's everything there in 3D. I notice that these joists here, let's just have a look at my joists, they actually need to go down by minus 20 millimeters, otherwise they turn up here in 3D. So there's my simple building.